Welcome back. Trust the process. Uh, Dynasty podcast here. Uh, first off, we'll put out our apologies. We had no podcast last week. My kids were awful. I had a terrible day. I did drugs and went to bed by eight o'clock. Uh, so we did not film. Uh, so we are going to make up for the last two weeks of scores. Uh, let's start with week nine. What did it look like, Jake? Uh, yeah. So we going over week nine. Nothing crazy happened. Um, everybody that kind of needed to win did win. Um, the only, I guess, notable matchup we could go over was the four string run. Oh, technical difficulties. We'll be right back. Yeah, no, you're good. My headset just shut off real quick. Um, so we have Josh, uh, who beat Joel. Joel won the tank off there. Um, but other than that, everything kind of went as expected. Uh, J Rod almost pulled out a victory. Almost. <sighs> what could have been? Just, can I just tell you, I was sweating. I was like, <laughs> Boys, this is happening. This is happening. I was rooting for you. It was I was rooting for you too. too. Um, but yeah, even uh, though you're tanking, like a good upset like that, like you at least have fun with that, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Four string though, a tanking team, and he has the high score of the week. Yeah, pretty the low pretty scoring week overall. Um, going into last week, now that we're catching up, so this past week, um, again, everything kind of went as expected. Um, nothing really notable. Macon did beat Birdo. Um, a really another interesting week, just kind of weird with some of the scores. Um, couple scrape by wins. Joe's team popped off. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary though. Um, but that leads us to our week over week uh matchups. So I still am in the lead going 46 and 7 over the last two weeks. Uh, expanded the lead a little bit. You are sitting at 41 and 13. Look, um, before the people start roasting me in the comments here about these picks, I just want to say Jake is like the banker in Monopoly right now. Like he's the only one keeping score here. Uh, and he just magically picked perfect last week. All, all I'm saying, look, I'm not saying he's wrong. All I'm saying though is he's the one keeping score. Go on. Sorry. Listen, when you're born a winner, that's just what happens. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. We're set, here we go. So if we go to the next screen, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, sitting alone at the top of the boards here is myself uh, at nine and one. I have clinched a playoff spot already. I'm only team to do that. Um, but We're not coming. really. We're on our way. <laughs> J-Rod J says, give me two years. Um, but no, so overall, nothing too crazy is going on. Um, we're just going to kind of go over right now in the crunch time, the contenders, pretenders, um, people on the bubble and, and the tank group. So uh, sitting at the top is the contenders. Um, pretty straightforward. We have uh, myself, Bordeaux, Meech, you're up there. And then we have Najee in the group. Um, coincidentally, Macon is above him in the standings. Uh, but on the bubble is Macon and Joe. How do you feel about that, uh, Meech? Yeah, I mean – Macon's move, they kind of have surprised me all season. They've pulled out a lot of these, like, tough matchups. They've pulled out the win. Uh, but a lot of that was riding on the coattails of Derrick Henry. So now that he's gone, I would put Macon moves in the pretender spot. Um, I have been calling him a pretender all year. And right when I started to kind of buy into him, old age caught up to him. And the reason why I kind of was hating on them um, kind of started to fall into place. Um, and I'm going to say Zach's a pretender because he sent some crazy trades this week and he needs to <laughs> be called out for it. He's got to be the next one in timeout. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. I think his team age is going to catch up. I don't think it'll be Brady when we say age that catches up to him, but he's got some running backs that have, haven't been too healthy. Um, he's pretty light in that uh, department. Um trade deadlines a week out let's see if he he makes any moves to maybe solidify that and move up to that contender um and i think the similar story goes for joe's team who we have on the bubble but he's sitting at 500 jake you just <clears> brought <throat> up uh the, the deadline there can you explain it to our viewers exactly like you know what what happens when we get to that day um, <laughs> also for maybe the inexperienced teams i don't know like <laughs> uh yeah Jared, that's a great question um, yeah, so on the 23rd at 6 a.m., uh, we won't be able to make any moves in the league until uh, the end of the season. I believe it actually locks um, up through the Super Bowl. Is that correct, Meech? Um, I would have to check on the exact date. Um, it definitely is through the end of the year, though. 
Um, reason being is just to help avoid collusion. Um, you know, if you said you weren't coming back next year or something, or you knew you weren't and you were tanking and you start handing off all your best players to someone in the championship game, that type of thing. Um, not that I think you're the guy that would do that or anyone really, but, um, yeah, so it locks there for a little bit. Um, what's that open February 8th? So yeah, what is that? Super bowl, something around yeah, there right after the super bowl. I just bring that up because there's a lot of teams that haven't even used any of their, their cap. So just consideration, you know, for next year. Yeah. There's some couple teams. That still well, and that's why you money. saw some of these really popular free agents. People spend crazy amounts of money yeah. on it is because in theory, the, the waivers are only going to get thinner as the year goes on. Right. Because when there's an injury in the league, someone else already has the backup. And so it really just at the beginning of the year, when there's the most new things you're learning about a team, that's normally the best spot to grab free agents. Yeah. Pick them up. So yeah. Bruno has what? $6 left. Uh, yeah, he's got six dollars left, but we well have Schneidy sitting with all two hundred of his still. Joel hasn't really touched it. Um, Stu hasn't touched his too much. Um, the only thing that's really surprising is is that is uh, oh, J Rod, you're down there too, using a lot sitting there. Yeah, um, but I I lost a bet and it was like uh, I put almost fifty bucks on the guy and I can't. I wish I could remember who that was. I was dumbfounded the next day because i was like oh man i'm gonna get on my line we're gonna maybe gonna win this week and then it's like no no um yeah yeah, but i I think it is a good learning experience too because we're just here to talk about our league and the people that listen to it um be aggressive with it there's nothing i want more than this league to remain competitive and every position and in one through eight really be a question mark so going into next year use that budget on those guys you know all it takes is googling a quick article every week and seeing like maybe who you should target start learning about some things some more broader news in the league and you'll be able to to snag a guy who could really help a team that's maybe down at the bottom of the standings yeah yeah and and like i i kind of touched on it earlier in my opinion the first like six weeks i always try to be really aggressive on the waivers um, because you have all these new situations, every team, you might have a new quarterback, new wide receivers, whatever. So you don't know who's going to be the wide receiver one running back to all that type of stuff. And so earlier in the year, when you learn this new information, there might actually be people out there who you can plug in. And now they're a great dynasty asset where this week you can see, I think combined, we spent like $5 and it's like two defenses and one dart throw or something. So, um, they just get so thin by the end of the year because those situations don't change all that much throughout the year. Um, I know Josh listens to this. Shout out Josh. So, um, yeah, just some tips. Um, yeah, I think it's important. I know maybe more people will start listening to it as we get closer to playoffs and things like that too. So, but also if we do get any random listeners who just want to learn about fancy football and kind of how we're going through it as a young dynasty league, um, yeah. So back to where we were, we had our bubble spot. We talked about Joe's team, um, it's almost there. He's got some players. It's just, I don't know if he'll, he'll bump his way up there. We'll see what happens with some of these guys in the late season run. Um, yeah. But, Scary lineup though. I mean, outside of Devin Singletary, every guy on there is capable of dropping like a 30 burger on you. Maybe not Christian Kirk, but yeah. Michael Carter's really coming into his own. Yeah. Um, he's got some players and uh, Brandon Ayuk starting to get some more routes and targets. He's I mean, Waddles looked good at times. Yeah. So he's, he's got, got a scary team. In. Yeah. Uh, so, so shouts out to you, Joe. Hopefully you uh you get your year and, and start coming in place and being a contender. Um but yeah, so the last two groups, the pretenders, the the, the wannabes of our, our league, and I think that turns out to be uh Stu and uh we have Schneidy on the list, um just because he seems to be putting up points and, and trying to fight every single week. Yeah, and I don't know if Schneidy knows that he should tank. Like, if he knew, like, hey, I should be rebuilding, I think I would put him in the tanking team, but I don't think he knows that. And so I think he's still kind of trying to hang on and almost shooting for middle of the pack at this point. Yeah, Maybe you can touch um, on some of I was going to tag J-Rod in here, uh, being your brother, J-Rod. What, what do you think is going on here? What's his plan? Honestly, I don't know how many dynasty leagues he's been on. So that, hasn't I been think that's anything. really what it is when it comes down to it. He, he's used to playing that, you know, year by year. Mm-hmm. All right, the team's bad. I'll just pick up next year. I mean, yeah. maybe, maybe you have him on for a podcast once and, and, and get his viewpoint on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to bug him in. Maybe definitely when we go over his team at end of season, we'll, we'll force him on. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, hopefully we can get him on, pick his brain, maybe help uh, – put him in the right direction to becoming a, a contender and start winning some games. 
Um, but yeah, I think Stu's important. We really talk about how he's a very big pretender. Yeah. Um, and speaking of another team who doesn't know they should be rebuilding, right? <laughs> like right on cue. Uh, yeah. Uh, as expected, Stu's team. You got Josh think. there. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Stu's team definitely thinking he is going to win every single week. His team's not bad. Don't <laughs> get me wrong. His team's not bad. Mm -hmm. um, but the way he runs his mouth, you would think he, he's got a team of the top three. Yeah. Hey, top three in my heart, baby. Hey, in, in spirit, he is a champion. Um, but he's got some players, too. I mean, maybe he's a mover two away. He needs to get some mm -hmm. that receiver. Um, his stars kind of fell off, especially like A-Rob. Um, Mike Williams has fallen off. Can't wait to cash in that bet we have Meech with him. Not looking good. <laughs> not, not looking good for you. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. We have a couple of people who really could break out. We'll definitely revisit the the playoff hunt come two weeks from now, maybe next week if anything crazy happens coming up. Uh, but really, we'll just kind of start into next week's matchups and let's do it. Um, so next week. We have uh, Schneidy versus uh, Jacob. I think it's pretty straightforward. Top top of the charts versus a tanker. Yeah. Um, nothing to really talk about there. Uh, GG, Schneidy. Um, let's get him to start a person that's not Sony Michelle, maybe. Um, we can get him to do that. Uh, but yeah, that's something else coming your way. Whoever's listening, we are looking at inactive lineups and stuff going into next season. How are we going to treat that just for an integrity thing? Um, we really need everyone to at least be putting a team out there that can at least score points. Um, but yeah, you're in agreement. It's going to be me. I think that's straightforward. Yeah. Um, I'm going to save your matchup for last, <laughs> actually, because yours is the most. Uh, yeah, it's the only fun intriguing. one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now we got uh, the Lonely Boys versus Macon. What do you see coming out of this? Yeah, this should be Macon. Even though I don't like his team, uh, he should win this one. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be too close, unfortunately. His team, you know, um, maybe Joel gets a win. I know he doesn't want it, but who does he have backing up? Trevor Lawrence. Um, First overall pick, there. baby. <laughs> First overall somewhere. Um, no, he's coming along. He'll be good in a couple of years, just not going to score yeah. the points he needs. Yeah, in like the uh, arena league or something. I don't think the boy can play. At least yeah. not in Jacksonville. I don't think that's a good, I don't think he's going to be something. He doesn't seem to have, he, yeah, not turning out too well. Yeah. Um, J Rod, what do you see coming up? You're playing Stu, team you, you could maybe beat. What do you see going on with this? Uh, I see a plus 35 win by Stu. <laughs> <laughs> it, you think it'll be that close only one if, thing, man. if this game was on the betting sites i would take that over in a heartbeat yeah. 35 <laughs> you hear it here <laughs> um yeah i think we're in agreement. Um, <laughs> Sue's gonna win this one um even with his team kind of being mediocre um you, you patty's back this. pat mahomes 400 yards five tutters he's back yeah and uh picked it trayvon diggs but He'll, he'll he'll throw one of those next week for sure uh but yeah so straightforward there um next one we have josh versus Berdo. Berdo coming off that uh loss he's got some things going on here what do we see happening yeah i mean bird needs to be healthy right if camara and chubb are out or something like that <clears throat> who, who does he have to plug in you know and in fourth string even though he's tanking he is doing it um in like a very competitive way he's got some guys who could go off this week um i i see gaskin there in the upper left of the screen he's playing the jets and every running back that has played the jets has ran over the jets and and just absolutely demolished them so gaskin could have a good week james connor is dangerous right now mark ingram's looking dangerous if camara's out um it shouldn't be close but it could be uh yeah, I have uh, Bordeaux taking it, but I, I definitely think I wouldn't be surprised if we come back next week and, and Josh has a win there. Yeah, upset alert right here. Um, all right, we have uh, Tony Island, Jason going up against Joe. What do you got going on with this one? 
Joe should win this. Um, I know we just talked about his team. They're pretty scary. Um, Jason, I, I don't even, I won't even call it tanking for Jason. He's rebuilding and it's looking solid, uh, but I don't think he wins this one. Yeah, definitely an interesting approach with how he's doing it too. Just, he's got some guys who you've heard, you've heard the name before. They just haven't been the star. And so it's pretty interesting in that sense. Um, but yeah, sorry, Jason, taking a, a loss this week given Joe hopes of winning, maybe getting into playoffs, um, which leads us to the most interesting <clears throat> matchup and, and definitely one that uh, I'm curious to get your take on being your team. What do you see going into this? This is a pretty big matchup for you. Yeah, it is. This is probably something that determines um, like a playoff position, something like that. Um, we're both there. I think we both are contenders still, uh, but this might determine who plays you first round, who plays Bordeaux. Um should be a good matchup. I want Saquon back, baby. Just play four quarters for me. If he stays healthy, he was looking pretty scary when he was back um, intermittently this season so far. Um, he does have A.J. Dillon, who is going to pop off probably. Uh, he's looked real scary given that role after Jones went down. Yeah. Could be a league winner if he keeps it up. Um, this week, he's got a division game, tough Minnesota defense on the road. Um I don't think he goes off off here, but he might go for a hundred and a touchdown or something. Right. Um, but yeah, it could be a league winner if he ends up tearing it up like every week. Um, but I'll take my boys this week. I know I've kind of just beat around the bush for an answer. I like my squad, man. They look good. Um, un- unfortunately, maybe just to be different, I'm going to go with Najee, but I will tell you a couple of my concerns for what you said about AJ Dillon He's not going to be the top tier RB one just with playing Minnesota on the road. They've looked pretty good. Um, also, Justin Jefferson's playing Green Bay. Green Bay's looked absolutely elite on the defensive side of the ball the last few weeks. Um, they shut down three little yep. like Super Bowl contenders. Um, so it's a little scary. Um, I don't see Metcalf having a great game. Maybe he does, but he's been hit or miss this year too. Did he get um, suspended for that ejection? I don't think so. I wasn't sure uh, if that would be one that they reviewed or anything like that, yeah, especially because he tried sneaking back into the game. Yeah, I don't think they did. I think they just kind of wrote it off. Um, Interesting. Maybe that comes, and if that happens, then it's definitely not going to be a good call by me. Um, but no, I mean, I, I'm going to ride with the boys. Najee, take a W for me. Uh, bump everyone down in the standings a little bit. Separate myself. That means I'd probably play you first round, so I'm just – Careful what you wish for. There's not a team on this list that scares me. Yeah. There's a manager on this screen that should scare you. And it's me. <laughs> um, I look at every team on this league as we look at that picture of Goodell with the clown nose. It's not afraid. Bunch of chumps. Um, J-Rod, do you have any comments, questions for us? Um, anything you want to show out to the league? Um, you guys were talking about making and Ryan going off this week, right? That's who's playing, I think. Uh, I saw uh, one. No. Uh, me and Najee, I think, were the only good matchup. Yeah. yeah. Where's Macon, though? I... Macon is playing Joel. Oh, okay. I was going to say, pull up, pull up his roster again. I saw something kind of interesting that you guys didn't say. Um, take a look at his quarterbacks. You got Tom Brady, okay, the GOAT, Derek Carr, and there's a sleeper right there, Mac Jones. He's playing Thursday night football tomorrow. I don't know. I think he's going to pop off. He – what did he do? What, three touchdown passes last week? And, yeah. you know, he's still – he's still like a second, you know, a bench or whatever. I, I don't know. I think, like, he's get, getting that confidence, and I think this this week he's really going to go off on Thursday night. That's why I'm repping them. I got the Patriots on for him. You got America's team on. Yeah. Be kind of interesting to see if you put him in, you know, put him in the bench there. Roll yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Lots of hype for Mac Jones this week. He, he has had a good game. He is starting to kind of figure it out. I think the game's starting to slow down for him. A lot of hype for Mac Jones this week. That's a good pickup. <laughs> Might be um, looking for a trade there. Look right. out! <laughs> foreshadowing um so yeah guys this is the last pod before the trade deadline let's see if anything happens Um, give me those trades (laughs) yeah i I 
don't think I need to. Except you, Zach. No, no PSAs for anybody. I'm a little bummed about Aaron Jones getting hurt, but it is what it is. Um, I got Antonio Gibson slotted back in, so we're good there. Um, but yeah, shout out any trades coming on. I hope we have an interesting week next week. Um, I will separate myself further after Najee beats um, Meech. So yeah, that's really all I got for this week. We need a hot take. Jared, we need a hot, hot, hot take from you, buddy. Oh, man, you put me on a spot. I did put right. you on the spot. You did not get time to prepare. Uh, I don't know. I might I might have to pass on this hot take. I don't know. Jake, you got a hot take? Um, I mean, my hot take is is just gonna be I think uh I think Josh's team upsets Birdos. I like it. Uh, I, I really think that could definitely be something that happens. So, hey, if anybody wants to take me up on that plus thirty-five, just saying, take the over. <laughs> <laughs> He's got Venmo, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, but no, shout out to everybody. Let's have a hopefully busy trade deadline. Give us something to talk about next week. Sounds good. With that, we'll see you guys later. See ya.